Welcome everybody to your hands-on Java series. This episode we're going to be talking about refactoring. Now we're working on a project currently that works. Everything compiles, it runs, I think it's pretty much bug free. But one of the problems is that if we want to expand on this project it's not super organized. So the whole concept of refactoring is taking a project that is good <laughs> and changing the code so that it does exactly the same thing, but the code is cleaner. We're just changing the, the source, but not the actual program. And the purpose of refactoring is for the developer, not the consumer of the product. By improving the code base, the developers can more easily expand on the project or add new features or remove bugs, and as a result, those improvements will eventually get to the consumer, but it's not a direct, oh, we do this thing and then the consumer gets a new update. It's more like we're changing the back end of the code for the next release and you might not see any changes, but the code is a whole lot better. I think business people and others that don't have a direct hand on the code have a hard time seeing the value of refactoring because it doesn't necessarily change anything in the product. It's kind of like, it's working, why change it? And sometimes that's the case and you can kind of isolate something and say it's working, don't touch it. But other times it is best practice to change that code to allow us to expand on the project easier and remove bugs, as I've mentioned. So let's just jump in and start refactoring our project, which you can get this code in GitHub, Caleb Curry, and the project is 30 days of Java. So we have this maze solver program and the file we're looking at is mazesolver.java. And we have this crazy maze. I don't remember exactly where we start. Okay, so here's where we started. So that's somewhere in this corner. <laughs> and basically it's going to find the two and say if it's possible. So it goes from the starting position and it tries to navigate to the two, but it can only go through the ones, the zeros are walls. So that's the, the basis for how this program works. And if you've been following along, you may have coded this yourself. But this video is not about the maze solver. It's more about the code that makes the maze solver possible. So one of the issues that I see with this is that pretty much everything is inside of this main method. And like I said, it works, but it's not ideal for larger scale projects. The, the scope and the purpose of this application has become very limited because as soon as main starts, it just does its thing. And when main is over, it's done. We have one other method in here, but that's just to simplify some of our code. I would like to basically expand on that concept of breaking things out in methods so our code is easier to read, it's easier to isolate small sections of our code, and it's easier to increase the scope of the project if we want it to do other things. You know, maybe we want to offer a menu to read a maze from a file or to enter a maze in manually or to do all these different things. But right now it's going to be pretty clunky if we just try to add that code in now. So let's start our refactoring process and think about what would be the best steps to make this code better. So I think this could be done in kind of two stages. One is to just look at what we have and just try to rearrange stuff into different methods. And the second step would be to break things off into their own objects. So we can create some different classes and we're going to talk about object oriented programming in the next episode. So that's where we're going to break things off into their own class and all that junk. So for this one, we're just going to focus on the maze solver class and the stuff we have in here. We're not going to be creating any new classes. So the first thing you'll notice is that we do have a couple class level variables. So that's directly inside of the curly braces for the class and it's not defined within a method. I think that's fine for now. That seems to work. But what I don't like is as soon as you get in main, it just starts executing code. Main should be almost like this overview of what's going on in your program. And instead of having the code here directly, we should just have method calls. So maybe we could have something like solve maze and then we would end main right here. And it seems like it might do the same exact thing, which yes, that's the purpose, but then we could expand on this by putting this in an if statement and saying, hey, if it's successful, we can do this. If it failed, we could try a different path. It allows us to basically zoom out our view of the program and take a bigger picture look, and that's what main is for. So let's say we have this solve maze method. Now this method could take some arguments. So maybe we could pass in the starting position. So instead of saying this line here, 
what we can do is we can just say new position for eight. Now you might think that a good argument for this would be the maze itself, but these are defined in the same class and this maze is static so we can access that maze anywhere inside of this class. So we don't actually need to pass that as an argument. Now when you hover over this, you can see it's gonna give us an error because this maze is not defined, but this is a great way to generate some code because there's an option to create the method solve maze that takes a position. So that's a great way to basically make our lives easier. We first write the invoking of the method and then we can generate the, the actual method body and fill that out ourselves. So when we do that, it should go down to the bottom. So we'll scroll down to the bottom and you can see we have this solve maze right here. And that's where we're going to put the bulk of our code. So we're basically going to take all the code from main, paste it in here, modify things a little bit to make sure everything's working, and then we'll go from there. Now I'm gonna clear this screen off just a little bit because I think we can get a little bit more space, maybe zoom in a little bit, and that's a little cleaner. So let's just look at all of our code. We'll keep the method call, obviously, because that needs to stay in main and we don't need the position anymore. So we'll delete that and we'll cut everything else. Now the question is, can I stop at the right spot? I think we wanna stop right here. Cut that and you can see main looks like that now. And the shortcut for cutting for Mac is Command X and for Windows I think is Control X. So that's different than copying. It's, you can still paste it, but it's going to remove it in the process. And then we can go down, go down here and paste that with V instead. All right, so now everything looks pretty much the same inside of this method. You're gonna get an error because it says path.pushp, which was the original name of the position that we started at. So what we can do is we can change this argument to P and then Actually, this would technically be the parameter. The argument's what you pass in. So you can update the parameter name to P, and then you don't have to change any of your code. All right, so let's run this, see if it compiles, and also see if there's any errors during execution and so forth. So run, and it looks as if everything is working exactly the same. So did we change the program? No, but we did change our code. Now when someone looks at our code, they can see that inside a main, all it says is solve maze. They can clearly see that the only purpose for this application is to solve a particular maze starting at a particular position. But we can easily expand on this by putting this inside of a while loop. Imagine if we wanted to put it in a while loop and we didn't have it here inside a main. We would have had to put all of our code inside of a while loop, which would nest everything over and make it a lot harder to read and build upon. So now that we've done the basic refactoring, there are some other things we can do to make this application better. First off, inside of the solve maze method, we do this no path here. Alternative to just putting it inside of the method and saying no path, we could return false, and then we could deal with that on the outside. So let's try that. Let's just say instead of saying no path, we'll just say return and say false. Now false is a Boolean you know, true or false. So in order to return true or false, you have to go up to the method signature and change that return type from void to Boolean. Now, anywhere we originally had return, we'll need to update that with either return true or return false. So scrolling through this, let's take a look. You can see there's a return highlighted. Oh, there, it looks like there's a bunch of returns. So in these situations, we've won, so we could say return true. Return true, return true, return true, and return true. Anything else? No, I think that's everything. So now, inside of main, we can put this inside of an if statement. And now we can do sys out, and all we can say is, I forget exactly what it said when we lost, but I think it was no path. So in theory, we haven't changed anything about the result of the program, but the actual code is much cleaner. So basically what we did is we delegated the responsibility of saying success or failure to the calling code 
rather than the method, and that's generally a best practice. And actually, this isn't quite what I wanted, so we actually want that inside of an else statement. So we'll say else, paste that there, and then we can do a different system out here and say you won. Now inside all of the outputs in the earlier ones, we can just get rid of U1, like so. And we'll do that for the others as well. All right, that looks good. Now inside of main, we can say just you one and I think everything is going to work pretty much the same. So whether or not you want the if else right here inside of main or if you want it inside of the solve maze method, that is entirely up to you. It depends on how much information you want inside of main and how much information you want inside of the method. My personal preference is I like to keep the methods fairly thin and right now we have a pretty large method. The solve maze right now is doing a lot of things, so if I wanted to break this out into even smaller methods, I'd probably do that. And I usually leave the, the job of doing the output to the caller, not the method being called. So that is your introduction to refactoring for our maze application. Now I think you could go through here and look at other things you could refactor. For example, we have a lot of very similar code here and here that's repeating. You could probably refactor that into another method and then just pass in a different couple different numbers and that would make the, the solve maze method a whole lot easier to read. So you can do this infinitely. Try not to get too crazy with it, but generally when you have more smaller methods, it's easier to test, it's easier to read the code, and everything in life is just better. So that's that, and now what I think we could do is we could actually expand on this refactoring and break things off into different objects. So in the next video, we're going to create a class for a maze and the different things associated with the maze, and this will allow us to expand on this application even further. All right, I'll see you guys in the next video. Be sure to subscribe and peace out.